Telescope actually uh, takes your smart device, whether it be an iPhone, uh, Android, and turns it into an intraoral camera. Um, so it's a very simple system. It has a handle with a USB charge, two and a half hours on a charge. Uh, it is uh, antimicrobial. And then you have these little single use blades and it illuminates when you connect. So it's very simple. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And I'm gonna show the new provider app that uh, we just created with Teledentix. And so in the back of the screen, the back of the phone, you just connect like that. And it just looks, looks like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Teledentix app. And as you can see um, from the front of the screen, it has everything that you would need to run your business at, at, your, at the fingertip. So it has your appointments, um, it has your network. So like all of your providers that you refer business to um, right there. And then also at the bottom, uh, you'll see the little patients and it has all your patients right here as well. I'm just gonna go into uh, Abigail and you can see all these, these buttons here. Uh, you have a call button where you actually can do a, a live Zoom with your patient. Uh, the capture button, that's actually where Telescope resides. And then you have a chat, text, mail. Record button is kind of interesting where you can actually have a personal message to your patient, kind of a patient satisfaction thing or add any uh, information for them to help with their treatment and then prescription and then medical alert. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the capture button and launch the telescope app. So on the very right, uh, the the solid, solid button with the uh, uh, circle around it, that's where you can do video, 10 seconds of video. Uh, the, the middle one is stills. And then the one to the left is uh, your catalog where your images reside before you upload them into the patient's file. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple images. All right, and then I'm gonna go into the catalog and those images are residing right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and select one. And you see the tool button at the bottom there, it actually has all of your functions right there. So if you have an area of concern that you wanna circle, you can do that. And then there's a label button where you can actually annotate And if you want to erase, you just hit the erase and you just slide over the top and it'll erase. Um, so I'm going to go back and circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and you see the, there's a little arrow to the left. You just hit that and it'll actually upload uh, directly into the patient's file um, under images. So I'm just going to go into the images really quick and show you where they are. So they're time stamped, and now you have these uh, available um, real time because it's in the cloud. It'll actually be able to, the, the dentist on the other end, if it's a hygienist scenario, uh, he'll be able to see them or she will be able to see them real time and uh, be able to uh, help with the, uh, the treatment of the, of the patient. Also, I wanted to just go through a little bit about the, uh, um, the app as well. You can view the patient's profile, appointment history, uh, completed calls, and this is all at your fingertips on your phone. Um, and then the images, obviously that's where, where the telescope images reside. Patient information, you can upload information to the patient. Uh, you can provide videos, treatment plans, general progress, uh, educational information for the patient. And uh, that's about it. So, um, Michelle, did I uh, did I cover it all, or is there anything else that I missed about the provider app, other than the fact that it's real time? And no, you got you pretty much got it. You're a great right. little user. I love it. 
All right. Well, uh, I will kick it back over to Daniel. Okay, great. Thanks, Mike. That was an awesome presentation. Um, and then for this part, we are going to have Dr. Bill Jackson, our COO and co-founder of Teledentics and Virtual Dental Care, talk about the application a little bit um, from the provider's perspective, the patient's perspective, and then um, all in one just from a holistic perspective. So I'll pass it over to you, Bill. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and, and good evening, everybody. So we're by the way, really excited to work with, uh, with Holland Healthcare, having uh, met Jennifer, heard her vision. And what, what we've seen as we've been working with, uh, uh, as we've been working with Holland is that we now have something that kind of completes the circle. I'm getting feedback. I don't know if there's somebody that could be on mute that isn't on, on the panel. It would be helpful. Uh, thank you. Um, so it, it was great to meet Jennifer. One of the one of the uh, 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 necessary things to complete the the the, the ring of teledentistry is uh, the ability to have somebody holding something really in their hand and and completing out uh, the the patient or provider connection uh, with the software. Uh, we had early on as a company uh, assumed that intraoral cameras were going to be the solution. Uh, we uh, built. Uh, a lot of our application to support intraoral cameras out in the field. This is so much better. Um, you know, and I'm saying that as much professionally as I am uh, just having, having worked with, uh, uh, with other people that use this. It's so much easier to use in an intraoral camera. And I'll talk about it in a few seconds, but it's also a, something that a non-professional can use quite easily. Uh, so intraoral cameras, we, we experimented giving uh, visiting nurses intraoral cameras. They had to carry around a laptop. They had to uh, deal with sensors. They had to do things that uh, they just weren't used to doing, and, and hence they didn't do it. Um, and now we have a tool that, uh, uh, you know, frankly, I think it takes as good or better an image given, given what it's being used for. Uh, so at any rate, we, we, uh, again, we're really excited to, to work with, uh, with Holland Healthcare on this. Um, and, and we recognize right away that, uh, you know, if we could figure out how to tie this into our teledentistry application, it would help everybody. Uh, and, and so what, you're, what uh, Mike just showed you um, was, okay, we've got, uh, we've, got this, we've got this way of capturing an image. Now, what do we do with it? Uh, well, you know, we can put it into a patient record. We can share that record with other people. Uh, we can share it with the patient. The patient can download it later and, and take a look at it all through the application, all immediately. So you don't even have to wait until, uh, until uh, you've sent it somewhere and uploaded it somewhere. It's there automatically. Uh, so, so again, we've got, uh, we've got a web-based app. I'll talk about that just a, a few seconds, uh, for a few seconds, in a few seconds. And uh, 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 it ties in with uh, the uh, provider app and to the patient app. Those are two different apps. Uh, and they're both uh, fully integrated. The patient has different needs, different user interface, different user experience than the provider does, but it all works together. And as soon as it's up into the cloud, it's into a single application. I can go online then and, and, and look into the Teledentics application and, uh, and see all of this. It's, it, it is kind of like a mini practice management system. What I'll, what I'll say is, is rather than a practice management system, it's a mini um, uh, electronic health record. Uh, it's really rather robust, and, and uh, we can take the time maybe at some other point if you'd like to learn more about the application uh, to show all the things it can do. And you can see some of the things on the right uh, that it can do, and Mike certainly taught, taught, uh, touched on um, each of those. You can go to the next slide, Daniel. Uh, so once again, we've got, we've got this, uh, the, the provider app, which Mike showed. We have the patient app, very specific to the patient. We allow them to... Uh, uh, once, obviously, once it's hooked up to, uh, uh, to, a hall, to, the, to the telescope, to the Holland Healthcare device, uh, you can take pictures. You can also, and, and you saw Mike doing it in a real-time basis. I mean, you could literally remotely, if, if you're a hygienist in the field and you want a dentist uh, uh, to see the patient live, you could actually stream it the way that Mike was streaming it, and that'll go through the app. Uh, and you can, in fact, even take pictures, snapshots as the streaming is going, if you choose, and that'll go into the patient record. And again, then you can share that, it becomes part of your patient record, and it goes into the patient portal. And the patient then has access to that too. And anything else that's, uh, that you did, if you did a prescription, uh, if you wanted the patient to see other educational materials and so on and so forth. Uh, and and uh, we actually even allow the patient uh, to do selfies 
if, if they want to at home, and I'll talk about the various uh, uses is that we're beginning to even, uh, that we're touching on already, that we're planning on already, and barely a week goes by when we don't come up with another uh, a way that the telescope might, uh, might benefit uh, uh, the dental healthcare world. Okay, you can go on to the next one. So the, the point here is, is that we do have a, a, a really robust, within teledentics, a really robust electronic health record. Um, the, the, the past company that I co-founded and sold was a, uh, a company that uh, built uh, dental practice management software, uh, Plant TDS Denicon was the software, if you're familiar with it. And uh, I think that we can say, and, and, and Richard Lee, the other co-founder, he, he and I uh, were in that venture together. And I think that we can say, as far as, uh, as electronic health record goes, you're not going to probably get any better. You know, we have the ability to have forms. We have the ability to take notes. The forms actually are customizable. And so many people who use, uh, who use uh, uh, teledentistry are mobile and people that are mobile need forms literally for every location that they go to. So we have very customizable forms. Um, notes and so on and so forth. And these can be referred so that if you're, if you need to send the records to, if you're a hygienist out in the field and you want to send the records to a dentist, it's easily done. Uh, it's, it doesn't cost uh, you or the dentist anything to share those records. Uh, uh, so once again, I won't get into it. I could spend the, the whole rest of the time just talking about the electronic health record, but it's really quite robust. We don't intend to replace practice management systems, although I have to admit for certain, in cer certain mobile situations, we actually uh, come quite close and, and probably in a short period of time, we, we will have nailed it completely. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, this just uh, shows that this is everything, whether it's taken in the mobile app uh, on the patient side, whether it's taken in the mobile app on the provider side, uh, any entries in it go into uh, the web app and all three are, are uh, uh, near real time synced with each other. You can go on to the next one then, Dan. So, so as I mentioned, we keep coming up with uh, different ways that this might be used. So certainly it's gonna be used on the professional level and uh, the professional level can extend beyond just uh, a hygienist or a dentist uh, using this to illuminate the mouth and, and gather images, whether they be real time or, or, or just uh, photos. Uh, but we see the value and we're already talking to electron or uh, excuse me, emergency rooms uh, where uh, in fact, health plans, medical health plans, uh, Medicare Advantage primarily, that want to keep their patients out of emergency rooms. Uh, so, so potentially they could have at acute care centers, they could have these and, and a patient can go in there and, uh, or it could be done in a physician's office. Certainly every school, I think every school nurse should have one of these. Um, and this is a way that dentists can in fact extend their practices into their local community. So extend the footprint of their existing practices uh, by going to uh, schools, uh, school nurses, showing them how to use it, knowing, showing the uh, school nurse that in fact they can communicate uh, uh, with the dentist live for maybe very simple questions. Maybe the child's just losing a tooth and, and uh, uh, you can tell them it's not very uh, unnecessary for, their, for them to come in. Uh, uh, it can be at senior homes, it can be at community centers, uh, long-term care facilities, uh, nurses, um, uh, uh, nurses that are going into homes, nurses that are going into care centers. Uh, once again, very simple for them to use if we ask them, as we had it in our past, ask them to use an intraoral camera, it's just not gonna work. Um, and we could go on and on. Uh, Medicare Advantage may, from, from a consumer standpoint, uh, we've talked to uh, insurance companies that may just uh, give these as a covered benefit to the Medicare Advantage uh, folks. So that from home, they can have a, uh, a virtual care or maybe two virtual care appointments uh, at no cost that's, that's covered by the Medicare Advantage plan. Once again, saving that plan, significant amount of money, keeping people out of the emergency room, uh, catching disease in its earliest stages, dealing with chronic uh, healthcare patients, uh, diabetic patients and so forth, being able to uh, 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 give them dental care on the spot. So again, I, I, I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time on it, but there is a whole level of consumer use too that, uh, uh, that we've talked about. Uh, uh, but basically with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Simpson and let him talk about some of his visions of how people are using it too. Thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, Bill did a beautiful job in covering a lot of this. Um, I, I did want to expound on this just a little bit. And um, I mean, obviously, anybody attending this uh, uh, meeting tonight is well aware of where dentistry is and the trend uh, in moving beyond the traditional brick and mortar. 
um, delivery of care services because, you know, for, for a lot of reasons that we're all very well aware of, there's, there's a large segment of the population that are not being reached, um, either institutionalized or difficulty with transportation or homebound. Um, we also have uh, a workforce issue uh, in the rural communities. We have uh, close to 60 million Americans that are in a health profession shortage area. Uh, and when we're talking about rural air communities across the country, uh, in dentistry, uh, and those of us affiliated um, indirectly or directly with dental schools um, and the state dental associations, we're aware, well, well aware of uh, workforce shortages. And um, dentists are not going into the, to the rural areas uh, near at the rate that they used to. Um, so we, and we have those that are in the rural areas are an aging workforce. Um, here in Alabama, uh, we have numerous counties with one or no dentist. Um, and those that have two or one dentist, uh, over 50% of those are age 60 or older. And this is very similar across the country. So we have large segments in the rural communities um, that uh, do have FQHCs, uh, that do have community health centers, that do have rural primary care uh, physicians and doctors. Um, and some of uh, many of the states are starting to integrate oral health services, uh, hygienists into these areas. Um, being able to have dental offices, uh, say a general dentist in a, in a rural community, um, uh, be able to cover two or three counties uh, by expanding his workforce, her workforce, uh, sending uh, hygienists out or coordinating with uh, independent hygienists uh, and rural care facilities, um, rural hospitals being a, an on-call service. Uh, it really opens up opportunities to be able to take imaging um, and assess those. Um, we are uh, seeing uh, an increased desire and usage in uh, public health services and doing uh, school screenings and school risk assessments um, and uh, then working with community um, uh, dental hygienists. Um, and as he mentioned earlier, uh, there's quite a few people um, across the country now that are, are realizing that there is an entire market and unmet need in assisted living facilities and uh, nursing homes. And being able to capture images in these facilities, oftentimes you're not allowed to use Wi-Fi while you're there. Uh, you don't have to have that with this system. Um, you can capture and store and then uh, and then manage those uh, images later on. Um, and so there's a there's a great advantage in being able to do that. Um, and uh, you know, providing not only uh, emergency assessments, emergency services through the EDs and um, and the urgent care centers, as as Bill mentioned, but also being able to coordinate with uh, medical. Uh, facilities uh, and uh, and areas that they're, they're you know as I mentioned earlier significant dental shortages so uh, we're seeing a tremendous um, ability to do this uh, here in Alabama and in, in one area we've got in Northeast Alabama we have um, a group of five pediatric practices now that have telescopes every specialist that they refer to uh, is one two three counties away so now they're able to send images to ENTs uh, to get assessments for uh, tonsils. Uh, to see if they need to be assessed to have the tonsils removed without the parent having to take a day off of work and drive uh, two hours to get an initial exam. Uh, they're able to refer to their pediatric dentist uh, that are one or two counties away to do initial assessment, particularly since the pediatricians are well aware of some of the cases that may be having to go to the hospital. Um, uh, Bill mentioned in the hospitals themselves, a lot of the third party payers are realizing that there are significant medical savings uh, to be had by addressing oral issues. And uh, many of you are aware that uh, a good number of people that are uh, intubated um, in hospitals is due to aspiration pneumonia and oral hygiene and they're uh, culturing oral bacteria that have caused the pneumonia. And so being able to manage um, oral conditions for uh, intensive care patients uh, or patients in, uh, in uh, step-down facilities and in skilled nursing facilities um, can significantly reduce costs um, by you know, improving their health, being able to address needs um, uh, where they are, uh, and then direct and target your care appropriately, um, as opposed to uh, having to load patients up into the ambulances uh, to get them out of the skilled nursing facilities to the dental office. So there's some you know, more real world experiences that we are seeing and we are having, and we see such great potential for uh, nationwide. Thanks, Daniel.
Great, thanks, Dr. Simpson and Dr. Jackson. Uh, very good insights there. Um, and then right now, I did want to take the opportunity opportunity to remind everybody to ask questions in the questions box. Uh, we we will have some time at the end of this presentation. Uh, but right now, we're going to move on to our uh, our wonderful users, uh, Luxury Tooth Booth, uh, Sarah Tanner, and Jolene Caravu from Home Dental to Use. So uh, right now, I'd like to hear from uh, you, Sarah. Go ahead. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I'm Sarah Tanner, excuse the voice. I'm trying to get over this, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so I've used Teledentrix since April. I've kind of established my own platform to what I want. Um, it's been nice being having the support from not only Michelle, but um, Daniel, as well as James to kind of establish what would be best for me here in Colorado as a mobile and teledentistry um, platform for, um, the broad spectrum, Denver metro area, possibly um, the slopes, things like that, um, making myself as available as possible to where it can be utilized. Um, Teledontrex has been amazing um, in a sense of just providing an app, for instance, like I was having issues with my laptop, seeing a patient outside their home and I was able to hop onto my iPad and it was just that easy. So I love the accessibility, the app function, not needing Wi-Fi, um, not needing to depend upon that is huge um, firsthand. Um, my first experience, so Teledentrix has been one thing. And then I had um, a separate experience with Telescope at Comom, that's Colorado Mission and Mercy, um, where we saw 650 patients um, and they received oral health care services at no cost to them. I happened to work with Susan Cotton and I met Mike there. And Mike was like, hey, I've got a new gadget for you to use while you're here. And I was like, sweet, that's awesome. So um, the guidance of Susan Cotton, her um, expertise in oral cancer is impeccable. So I was, I was thrilled to kind of dive in there, learn from her, get firsthand experiences. This was actually in Canyon City, um, where most of the population was streamlined through their health history form. So they filled out a health history form if they were current smokers or tobacco chewers, they went through oral cancer screening, our section. If they had past experiences or past um, smoking or chewing habits, um, then they um, would come to us as well. Um, we would have the conversation of no judgment, like how are things going? Um, whenever you're ready to quit, we as healthcare professionals, as well as your medical professional are here to help to quit smoking, um, but let's take a look at your intraoral tissues. They change every couple of weeks. Um, so let's take a look. So I was able to use my magnifiers, my loops without the light and the illumination from the telescope was amazing. Um, it just kind of illuminated the entire oral cavity. Um, pictures were taken of lesions. Um, we would tell the patients, hey, no news is good news. And we're gonna send these over to the oral surgeon in a HIPAA compliant form. Um, your information is secure, safe. That's also an important thing for me in my practice is just making sure that I'm staying within the barriers of being compliant and safe, um, not only for my patients, but for everybody. Um, so we sent those off. Um, at one point I was like, Mike, okay, I need to get, there's like a, something going on behind the uvula when the patient says, ah, I'm able to see it. But when she kind of relaxes, I'm unable to see it. So I was like, is there another function to this? And he's like, oh yeah, there's a video function. And I was like, sweet, how do we use that? And he's like, well, I wasn't planning on going into that. And I was like, well, I'd like to go into that and know how to use it. So being able to dive in real world with both um, the telescope here with Susan Cotton was, was amazing. I, I think I used it every person in my chair and I just got so used to it. So the, the, the aspirations that I have is to use this in every one of my patients um, in my practice, just as a standard of care, like I would a perio chart or x-rays. Um, and also for Dr. Simpson, he may want to indulge on what a dentist is looking for um, within the telescope. Like what kind of images would you like? What kind of videos would you like? Um, just to go into detail to provide us as direct access care providers um, more insight as to what dentists are looking for. Since they're not in there themselves, what do they want from us direct access providers to provide with 
um, for instance, telescope as, as an or ability to use that. Um, so other than that, yeah, I, I love the integration of the two. Um, I've used them within the telescope app. I'm sorry, the Teledentrex app, and it's been seamless. I haven't had an issue. So yeah, I love it. So Dr. Simpson, if you don't mind going into what you'd prefer to see within um, caption images or videos for us to provide dentists, that'd be great. Thank you. <clears throat> Sure. Um, I, do you want to just save that towards the end? So we've got Jolyn in coming up or how do you want to do that? Yeah, let's go ahead and let's move on to Jolene and then we'll, uh, okay. and then we'll, we'll have that as a, as a question at the end, but we'll, we'll definitely okay. get back to that. Great. Yeah. So Jolene, over to you. Okay. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. I agree with you. I am overcoming, um, excuse the voice and thank you for having me, but I am recovering like many, many people these days. Um, I am really excited in 2021, Teledentex was my choice of a software program for my mobile portable um, dental uh, business in the Tampa Bay area. We were implementing the intraoral camera and um, a great uh, radiograph system. And Teledentex really rose to the occasion by making it that we did not need to um, be connected to a Wi Fi, which can be very, very challenging and difficult in some situations. And um, Moving on to the next slide. Um, as Sarah was saying that she was using it for oral cancer screening. So moving into 2022, kind of realizing the benefits of the telescope and that it's not just gonna be a individual capture like an intraoral camera. We're doing a palpable and visual oral cancer screening on all of our patients. But I love the idea that this is gonna be a capture video. We can use it um, with Wi-Fi, without Wi-Fi and just get a lot more detail. So in Florida, um, we're supervised by a dentist. So I'm passing all the information from my assessment on to my dentist um, for him to be able to diagnose, but it'll just give more um, visual for him to view a video instead of um, individual capture. So I'm very excited about that. Not only, yeah, excuse me, is he looking for next, screen there, Daniel, um, for the oral cancer screening, but it's just an oral assessment and exam. And because a uh, primary part of our population is in long-term care and they have a lot of different health issues, we're looking for a lot of different, um, could be abnormal conditions and thrush seems to be um, very predominant in the senior population. And I feel like the um, telescope video just is going to give um, us a better um, visual of what's going on in the patient's mouth. So it'll be better for patient education. It'll be better for the facility and the medical dental integration, as well as my dentist when he is doing diagnosis um, for our next step forward for referral or prescription or you know whatever direction we're going in. So I am just so happy with Teledentex. I know that um, we've come a long way in a year and I'm excited to see where we go in 2022, but definitely Telescope is something that I look forward to implementing with all of my seniors. I hope COVID will slow itself down so we can get back into the facilities. We were doing great up until the holidays and now we're kind of on hold again, but I'm sure a lot of you are experiencing the same thing. So thank you for Teledentex for um, just really helping us move forward in a very progressive way. So thank you, thank you. Awesome. 
And then uh, real quick, I, I did want to share. So these are some telescope images that have been taken, um, and especially for uh, oral cancer, and this looks like tonsillar cancer as well. Um, so mm -hmm. as you can see, the high definition um, illumination uh, really lets you get in there and see it with great clarity as well. Um, Very detailed. So with that, I did want to go on to questions. So if you have any questions, please type them into the box. And then we are going to circle back to the question for Dr. Simpson that Sarah had. Um, so what type of images and or videos are you looking for as a doctor when working in collaboration with a direct access hygienist? Um, first of all, I'd love to state that uh, in Alabama, we have that ability. Um, <laughs> I would love to be able to have hygienists out remotely, um, but we're not there yet uh, with our dental practice uh, uh, here in this state uh, regulations, but um, we are, we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, we're working with the community dental um, hygienist now uh, going to uh, public health facilities and, and nursing homes. But, um, you know, to, to touch base on the soft tissue uh, first, um, you know, really I, I, what I've found that's very helpful is if you come, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of, everybody ha kind of has an image of the, of the mouth in their mind. And, and so really kind of coming straight on uh, with the mouth open, head tip back, you get hard and soft palate and then depress the tongue and get the throat um, and then come back forward and, and get a good view of the tongue and retract right and left. Um, and then what I found is helpful when you want to look at the buccal mucosa or the inside of the cheek, is not have the, the blade all the way in, but pull it out and catch the edge of the mouth and retract, and then you can see both cheeks. So I generally like a, a soft tissue survey that way first. Um, so it's maybe, you know, one, two, three, four views, uh, one on each cheek, uh, the tongue, the soft palate and, and hard palate and the throat. Um, and then from a dental standpoint, uh, you know, of course, lower arch. Um, and if you're doing stills, um, you can, you know, capture the entire lower arch, or you can choose to do one side at a time, uh, upper arch. And then one, it, it takes about 10 minutes of practicing with this. And I recommend practicing if you haven't used it. Um, Mike is an expert at it and, and offers free, um, you know, 15 minute personal, uh, demonstrations, uh, which is a great way to go. Uh, but he uses a, a, a little mirror and you can practice on yourself at first, but um, when, you're, when you're taking pictures of the side of the teeth, one of the things that you may have noticed is you rotate the camera to the side. So that's not intuitive at first, but as you do that, uh, it, you find that it's very easy. So uh, from a dental standpoint, the dentition, what is helpful for me is have uh, one or two views of the lower arch, you know, the occlusal surfaces, one of the two of the upper occlusal surfaces, and then have them partially closed down retract the cheek, get a full buckle on one side, a full buckle on the other side. And um, generally you're able to see the lingual surfaces when you do that, but if need be, you can uh, retract the tongue. And one thing I found that's helpful is you can capture say the right buckle, have them open, retract the tongue, catch the, the left lingual, and then cross over to the other side if that made sense uh, without moving the camera. Uh, really, you're just shooting buckle, have them open wide, you shoot the lingual on the opposite side and then come across. Um, so a survey of the occlusal surfaces, the buckle, uh, and then a soft tissue survey are, are, is very helpful. And if you want to assess the occlusion, then of course you can uh, have them closed down. The video is a really nice capture. You can start on one side, you know, practice it first, uh, retract the cheek, gently roll across. I think um, uh, Daniel actually showed uh, two quick videos there where you saw that it it rolled around, did the whole survey of the lower arch, then you flip it and then do a whole survey of the upper arch. And in 10 seconds, you get a complete view of the full dentition. So video is, is a nice way to capture all of that uh, with fewer stills. And then you can actually take stills from the video, which is, a, is, is kind of a nice way to go too. Particularly, I would imagine if you're working with the elderly, I don't do that as being a pediatric dentist, but um, being able to get in there and in maybe two 10 second videos, capture everything as, a, as opposed to having to do a whole series of stills might be helpful in, in some you know, patients where it's a little more challenging to, to obtain access. I hope that helps. Absolutely. All right, thank you so much. So um, we have another question here, and I think this one's actually best for you, Dr. Simpson, about the benefits of using a telescope as opposed to a traditional intraoral camera. So any insights you have about that would be great. 
sorry, I was muted. Um, sure. Uh, and, and uh, you know, definitely, Bill, you can jump in too. He alluded to it uh, some. Um, first of all, I would, I would put a, a bunch of it in, in a convenience standpoint. Um, not having to have Wi-Fi, uh, not having to carry a laptop where you're going, um, not having to be attached to a cord, um, and then being able to uh, capture larger areas. Uh, many, you know, the intro oil cameras, you know, you're pretty much capturing a, a, a more isolated area in most images. You're not able to capture, say, the entire, um, you know, upper right posterior quadrant, you know, from, from anterior to posterior in one shot uh, most of the time. Being able to um, assess soft tissue um, with this uh, type of device um, and, and uh, you know, retract the tongue. Uh, you're, you're able to illuminate. Uh, you're not illuminating with those devices, um, whereas you are with this. You're able to retract tissue, move the cheeks out of the way, move the tongue out of the way, depress the tongue, um, capture video. Um, so there's, there's the convenience, there's the ability to illuminate, there's the ability to retract um, and, and get uh, more uh, into your image uh, at the same time. And in addition to that, as I, as I say, getting more into your image, you can also zoom in and out. Um, so, um, you know, and, and you can do that as you're filming uh, or taking the pictures. But what I've found is really helpful since the, the software actually sets your camera to the ideal zoom. Um, I have found it very helpful just to capture the image and then zoom in on your screen um, to get a better view. And um, what's really been eye-opening for me is what I think I see with the naked eye. And then you zoom in and you realize you're seeing things that you didn't see otherwise. Um, the imaging is actually better quality than if I were just looking directly in the mouth myself. Um, and and uh, so I think there's a, not only the convenience standpoint, but the, the ability to do certain things in the mouth that you can't do with a, a smaller intro oil camera. Um, and I, Bill, if you want to jump in or. Uh, yeah, I, 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 that, that was a good, that was a good summary. I, I just add a couple things. One is cost. <laughs> this, yeah. uh, this is considerably less than a, uh, an intro oil camera. And then the other thing I would add is, is, is it doesn't take a professional to use it. Uh, so it could be a nurse at a, uh, at a uh, senior home. It could be a traveling nurse uh, and uh, intro oil cameras, uh, no matter what you want to say about it, unless you're, uh, unless you've been trained to work in somebody's mouth, it doesn't come natural. And, uh, but you can use a uh, telescope without uh, a whole lot of professional training. You had great, uh, great suggestions, Rick, as to how a professional could do it faster, but you know, it doesn't have to be a professional. Uh, they'll figure out how to do it. Awesome. And then on that bill, uh, we did get questions about uh, pricing for teledenic subscription and telescope. So if you could speak a little about that and um, comparing to you know, traditional practice management softwares and the pros and cons of, of each would be great. Yeah, the, without you giving a commercial, we, we intended when we started the company to use uh, teledenics as part of a, 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 a really a whole regimen as to how to treat people that were underserved uh, that didn't have access to care. Uh, and uh, we knew that we had to make it work right for the people in the field, which most, uh, not most, all in office uh, traditional software doesn't, uh, doesn't do it, requires uh, uh, workarounds. And uh, uh, we needed to make it scalable so that you could potentially see hundreds, if not thousands of, of locations and, and different people at locations. And then the third, uh, the third component was, is we knew that uh, we needed to keep it inexpensive. Dental practice management software is really expensive now. Uh, so from our standpoint, we keep it really simple. It's only $35 a user uh, with a, a four user uh, a minimum. So basically 140 a month for most, uh, uh, most small practices. There's no uh, most uh, small uh, hygiene practices. Uh, but we've also worked with, uh, uh, with Holland Healthcare and uh, telescopes are only $99 a piece if you have a Teldenix uh, a subscription. So it's kind of unbeatable. I mean, if you're gonna go, and with our, with our software, by the way, uh, our, our image capture, including x-rays is, is native. So you don't have to work with a third-party application. You don't have to uh, uh, work with, um, 
uh, with the uh, problems of integration, although we do have our own problems with integration with, with sensors. But uh, uh, nonetheless, it's, it's a, a really affordable solution, hopefully from our standpoint, getting to our ultimately founding goal of, of how to uh, get access to care to the underserved. Great. So it looks like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we've covered all the questions in here. Um, just wanted to give one op more opportunity for anybody to ask any more questions. Uh, there, there looks like there's one more in the chat from uh, Bob Montgomery. Um, first of all, the, I think the first part was just a, a good point um, in that, uh, you know, a nursing home, to my knowledge, I don't know what it is in every state, but a nursing home is supposed to contractually have agreement with the dentist. Uh, now, my mother spent two years in a nursing home, never saw the dentist, never heard about a dentist, um, but her son being a dentist, I was able to handle all three of her dental emergencies while she was in her bed. Um, however, assuming that that, that is the case, um, but it would be difficult for a dentist to get to the facility, and you may be in a state where you don't have a hygienist that can go for you, being able to train the staff there uh, at the nurse's station um, so for all the shifts to be able to use a device and have a de delegated device, whether it's a phone or um, say an iPad, uh, would be fantastic because they can say, well, hey, uh, Mrs. Jones is complaining of pain on the lower left. Um, here's the image I took and then send it and he can do a, an asynchronous assessment and send it back and going, yeah, this is just so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. It just looks like a mouth ulcer. Here's what you need to do. It'll be fine. Or no, it looks like we've got an abscess and then prescribe uh, accordingly and then say we need to make arrangements to get her in. Um, so that would be a huge service uh, to these facilities that don't have on-site or um, you know, mobile uh, oral health uh, services coming to their facilities. Um, and so then he did have a question about uh, the cost per unit. So, um, you know, either uh, Michelle or, or Bill, I'll let one of y'all address that uh, in regards to how the, the telescope uh, combined with the teledentics. How that's yeah, that. and, and just to reiterate, it's $100 per. I mean, that's, that's a significant discount if you were to buy it all by itself. So, so if you have a subscription to teledentics, it's $100 per unit. Um, let me add to the uh, to the at the nursing home thing, and, and you're right, Rick. It is um, it is on a state by state basis a requirement. Um, I've gone to any number of homes and asked them who's the dentist, and the people that work there have no idea. So they have signed somebody up, but they don't even know who it is to call. Exactly. Uh, so that certainly works. But there's also uh, Medicare uh, covers uh, uh, institutionalized uh, special uh, uh, needs patients. I sniff. Uh, patients and, uh, you know, read uh, Alzheimer's for the most part. Uh, and so these insurance companies, uh, it's very expensive to deal with a dental problem if, uh, if th that might be an easy one. Uh, as you say, maybe there's just something that can be taken care of there. But to actually get these patients, and, and of course, they're difficult to move, very expensive to move. They typically have to be treated within a hospital setting. So if it's something minor, it's, it's a, uh, uh, something that uh, uh, these insurance companies would like to work with dentists a lot. Uh, but get, to get back to what you were talking about, uh, going to these homes, whether it's schools, whether it's senior homes, whether it's retirement living centers, uh, this is a way for a dentist to expand his or her practice uh, beyond the four walls of, of, their, of their office. And uh, where they can, in fact, do diagnostic services remotely. And then if the patient needs to come into the office, then you work that out. So, so we see this and we see some of our customers using this as a, a great marketing tool, an easy way to get known in the neighborhood without too much effort. Uh, it is an ongoing marketing, by the way. You don't just drop it off and then hope they send you something. You, know, you need to go back periodically, see how it's going and so forth. Uh, but it is a wonderful marketing tool. Can, hello, can you hear me? Yes. I got the guy to be quiet on my computer. <laughs> I wanted to add, I, um, I had, before I, some, someone stole my iPhone, I was using my, um, my teledentex light and camera in a group home. We received a contract with the males group home and they're all adults and they're in a rural area and they all were special needs and between the ages of 18 and 35 and it was so helpful because a lot of them 
were severely have su were severely um, has severe, severe mental issues, but they thought the light was cool. They opened up to it, and the dentist and I both were able to get in and do some great exams. So that it really worked good in the special needs population with adults. It was a great opportunity. And my grand dog had broke his tooth and I was able to take a picture of that and send it to the vet. Just saying, it all worked together for the love of animals. If any animal of the haters are on here, I'm sorry, but it did work good for my grand dog. And I was able to send it to his vet and everything was okay. So I love Teledentex and I, I got my new kit in the mail, my new um, um, case for the phone in the mail and I'm gonna be going out um, using it more often. But I wanna say to me, the biggest advantage the biggest advantage, and this always gets me in trouble, is the fact that it's on the phone. And it's easy, when, when Melissa asked the question, what's the, the advantages? The biggest advantage to me is it's on the phone. Most people have their phone with them and there's no cords, no strings, nothing to hook up. You just cut your phone on and just go. So that just makes my whole world happy. So I wanted to add that in. Thank you all. This has been a great, great um, webinar. Thank you so much, Sonia. So it looks like we have time for one more question. McAllister, I know you put one in there and I think this is probably geared towards Dr. Simpson's uh, expertise, but when you see a, a when you show a intraoral photo to a patient, does that make them more accepting of the treatment? Does it give them a sense of urgency? Um, do they understand a little bit more of you know what you're seeing in the mouth? So, um... I would have to, to say that I'd have to do that by word of mouth of my general dentistry colleagues. Um, I have a distinct advantage being in pediatrics that parents and other caregivers and grandparents will make sure their kids are cared for before they're cared for. Um, and I have the, also the advantage of having the kid open his mouth and have the parent come over and me show it right then. Um, so I'm not trying to uh, convince the child uh, about the care. I may be trying to convince them and how we're going to do it and how it's going to work out and it's all going to be okay. Um, but uh, I have the advantage of direct vision from the, from the parent. Um, now, I do have a lot of colleagues that uh, there's no, no doubt that being able to, to see the images um, as they're discussing it, it, it makes a, a huge difference um, in their acceptance of uh, of the diagnosis, acceptance of the recommendations and the treatment plan. There's no doubt about that. Now, in, in thinking in terms of, you know, things that, that uh, Sonia deals with and some of the other people that are, are dealing with where you, you have special needs patients, you have, um, you have uh, elderly that aren't making their own healthcare decisions. Um, with the Teledenix uh, app and the telescope, you can capture the image and you can bring in on video call their decision makers, their um, you know healthcare um, uh, decision makers, whether it's their adult children or whether it is you know a sibling, um, and being able to conference with them as what your findings are and what your recommendations are without them you know they may be an hour away in another city, um, so being able to provide that I think it would be a is a, well I know is a very comforting. Um, you know, aspect of being able to provide that care is giving them an image and saying, hey, this is what happened. This is going to be okay. This is how we, we recommend addressing it. And we wanted to get your permission to do that. Uh, I, think, I think that would be a tremendous uh, advantage in being able to do that for people who can't make their own decisions as well. Great. Awesome. Um, and then one note too, in the chat, there is a link to uh, our joint website at git.teledenics.com uh, where you can learn more about the telescope and then talk to our team about, um, you know, the subscription to Teledenics and a demo and um, getting that Teledenics or that telescope price uh, with Teledenics. So with that, um, you know, we wanted to express our sincere thanks to both uh, Sarah and Jolene for coming on and helping us out from the real world user perspective. And thanks to the National Mobile and Teledentistry Conference and the American Mobile and Teledentistry Alliance for having us on tonight. And I will pass it over to you, McAllister. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Daniel. I apologize. Everyone will have to listen to my dog eat her bone in the background. I am so excited. This was such a fabulous discussion. Thank you everyone for sharing your expertise. Um, as we all saw, there's a really great opportunity to not just help connect with our patients, but even connect with other healthcare professionals. I mean, I never even thought about being able to help screen for like, should we get tonsils out or something for a child? What a really unique opportunity that we can have some um, cross collaboration re and referral with our medical colleagues as well. So um, I'm sure you also on the chat too, Melissa has the link down there, that special link for the discount as well. Um, for all of our attendees, we will send out some follow-up information as well. Make sure you have all those links too. Um, if you do have any more questions about teledentics, how on healthcare, the telescope, please feel free to reach out to our fabulous panelists as well. We want to just thank you again for taking the, the time this evening for everyone to join us for such a wonderful discussion.